Welcome, welcome, welcome to St. James Baptist Church. Hope you've had a wonderful week as we intend to worship God today. To our virtual audience, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Come on in and we're going to worship the Lord today. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank you for, oh God, for allowing us to be in your presence once again. Lord, let your spirit have his way, oh God. God, move like never before. And God, as our uh, pastor bring forth the word, oh God, God, give us the ear to hear and a heart to receive, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us stand for our male course. Y'all got to be real. Y'all got to be real. 
song Jesus died on Calvary For the world of wrecks like me I'm so glad he remembered me For my soul's been anchored. So uh, do I say there's Brother McLean and Tim. And 
a current that seems so free. But in the world. Let's give a hand clap for our male chorus again. Amen, amen. You may be seated if you can. I do have some additional announcements on this morning. The office will be closed tomorrow, um, which is January the 15th, in um, observation of Martin Luther King's birthday, amen. amen. Bible study will resume this Tuesday, January 16th at 7 p.m. and Wednesday, January 17th at 12 noon. Bible study will also be in-house. If you are not able to come in-house, it will also be um, virtual as well. We will have our fourth quarterly church conference this Friday, January 19th, starting at 7 p.m. We will have a church-wide workshop for all church members on this Saturday, January 20th, starting at 9 a.m. Breakfast will be served from 8 a.m. to 8.45 only. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have Sister Kimberly, um, who will come and minister to us in mind. Amen. Praise God. I say it like this, I say, Lord, fix it for me. Anybody know that only God can do it? Oh, fix it for me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because, Lord, I have a problem that only you can solve. Oh, Lord, do it for me. 
Can y'all play that for me? Let's bless God, the Lord. Jesus, do it for me. And if you don't do it, then it just won't be done. Come on, let's give God praise this morning. Come on, if you want the Lord to fix it for you, if you want the Lord to do it for you, whatever it is, I dare you to stand to your feet. Come on, tell the Lord, lay your hands on yourself. Lord, fix it for me. Come on, tell them, Lord, fix it for me. Come on, tell them, Lord, if you don't fix it, then it just won't be done. Fix it for me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. We praise God for Jesus. And God is a fixer. God is not a healer. He is a healer. He, he is a way out of no way. He is a bridge over some troubled waters. He is bread. Come on, somebody. In a starving land. He is water when we are thirsty. He is our lawyer. Somebody says in a courtroom. And he is our doctor in a sick room. Come on, let's give him praise. Lord, do it for me. Come on, let us sing with that song. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. If 
do it for me. Oh Lord, oh Lord, do it for me. And why, why? You don't fix it, it just won't be done. Oh Lord, do it for me. Well, one more time, Lord. Who you want him to do it for? Come on, come on. Oh Lord, do it for me. If you, it just won't be done. Therefore, I say, Lord, come on, lay your hands on yourself for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you can. Amen. We serve that kind of God. Is there are some things in 2024 you won't be able to do yourself? If you do it yourself, then you wouldn't need God. But there are some things in 2024 that you need God to do for you. That God is going to prove himself. And you're going to be a witness in 2024 that the Lord can do it. And when they ask you, how do, I, how do you know? Because he fixed it for me. I don't know about you, but that's, that's, that's my story. That's my story. He fixed some stuff for me. My mama couldn't fix it. My siblings couldn't fix it. My daddy couldn't fix it. My grandmama was a praying woman and she couldn't fix it. But the Lord fixed it for me. Now I got a story. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. We bless God on this second Sunday in the month of January 2024. God has truly blessed us and brought us through many dangers, toils, and snares. I pray you've had a blessed week. And if you didn't have a blessed week, amen, when you leave out today, you will leave out in joy. That's why we come to fellowship. Amen. That we can lean on those who had a good week. That they will inspire in us and facilitate that same joy within yes. us. And when we come to the Lord's house, we ought to leave out a blessed people. We might leave out with a tear in our eye. Amen. But at the same time, our hearts rejoice over what God can do and what he has done. Amen. Lean over to somebody and tell them good morning. Now come on, tell them good morning. Good morning, good morning. Amen. So I'm glad to see you alive here. Amen. In the Lord's house. And we are just so grateful and we are just so blessed. We are blessed. Um, if you have not already noticed, um, service is at 845 now to, uh, uh, instead of 9, uh, 845, we will, you will see um, our praise team. Um, I think it was our brothers this morning. Let's give them a hand. Amen. From 845 to 9, we just want to get into a spirit of praise and worship. I, I, tru I believe, I, well, let me feel what I don't believe. I do not believe just walking right in the presence of God, amen, and just jumping into. I do believe that the spirit of God has to be ushered in. <clears throat> The presence of God has to be ushered in. And when we come in, amen, um, and check ourselves at the door or before we get to the door, amen, and make our way into the house of the Lord, find our special place, amen, that we love worshiping God at. Notice I didn't say find your seat. Because somebody may be sitting in your seat. Amen. But you find your special reserved place when you come in. If somebody is sitting in your normal reserved space, you just kindly find you another reserved space. The same God that was in that seat over there is the same God. 
who's in that seat over here. Amen. And I believe the closer you get to the fire, the warmer you'll get anyway. Amen. So we want to come in at uh, 845. We want to just, just help the praise team. We don't want them to just sing to us. Amen. But they are ministering to us. They have taken the time to learn the praise songs, to get it in their spirit so they can invoke that in our spirit. So when we come in, let's come in. Let's, let's, let's literally enter uh, his gates with thanksgiving when we come in. Amen. And his courts with praise. Let us come in with a spirit. Amen to come in and be ready to worship God and then from 8.45 to 9 then at 9 we'll as Minister Tyrone just did we'll take over from there um, if the Lord allows amen and we'll just move on in with our announcements <clears throat> and move forward with the rest of the service and that gives us more time to worship God uh, through word amen however God wants to move I believe in liberty amen and wherever the spirit of God is there is what there, there, there is liberty. Um, I just want to just uh, mention this one, one other thing um, that um, uh, Tyrone mentioned about the um, next weekend uh, church conference is Friday, but Saturday I'm going to do a workshop with the entire church. I challenge you to please come out, um, eat breakfast with us from eight, eight fifteen to eight forty five, eight to eight forty five. Anyway, you have to eight forty five, amen, <laughs> At, um, and not eight forty six. Um, 846, I've already told a culinary at 846, shut it down. So if you come in dragging, amen, I, I don't know what to tell you, amen, because they have to come up here as well, amen. Nine o'clock, we're going to start, we're going to roll, and, uh, and we just want to allow God to minister to us uh, and bless us um, and see where he takes us. Truly, the Lord has plans for us in 2024. 20, uh, I'm excited about the year. I see things in front of me, amen, uh, that we've been waiting for for a while, and uh, I'm trusting God to bless us and get us going where we need to be. Amen. Um, let's uh, worship this morning in blessing and uh, our guests. We have any guests this morning. We want you to stand. We want to acknowledge you this morning. If this is your first time worshiping with us this morning or second, just stand. We want to acknowledge you. Amen. Amen, my brother. Amen. 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 But please remain standing. Someone will approach you in a second. Amen. Um, we want to acknowledge you this morning. Um, you, you will receive a, 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 a fill out card, a guest card. Please fill that out. It tells us information about you, and you can leave that. Um, uh, young man, please stay. We want to give you something. Amen. He's over to my left. Amen. Amen. Young man, please. Yeah. There you go, Joe's case. There you go. Yeah. There you go, my brother. Amen. 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 Um, we ask that you please fill that out. Please fill that out and leave it with us if you don't mind. Amen. And leave it with the ushers, or you can leave it in the um, offering basket on on your way out. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Let's give let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Thank God. For those who are watching virtually, God bless you today. We thank you for watching our St. James uh, worship service on, on this morning. May God continue uh, to bless you. Let's at least acknowledge our camera. We want to wave at them this morning and tell them good morning. Amen. Y'all like we doing sign language. Amen. Just... Amen. But we praise God for every opportunity that we have uh, to minister uh, Jesus uh, to a dying and lost world, and particularly those who take the time uh, to watch our broadcast. You know, uh, people watch two or three worship services on Sunday. You do know that, right? Amen. But I'm just so glad they wake up and say, let's, let's, it's nine o'clock. Amen. Let's, St. James is on. Amen. I'd rather hear that than to say, it's nine o'clock. Let's turn to somebody else. Amen. And so we want to continue doing that. Thank God for our, our media this morning um, who make everything happen for us. Amen. I don't think we give them enough as we should and acknowledging them to make sure uh, that we are out before the world and the world could see us and that we are visible to ourselves and we give God glory. I want to recognize this is the second Sunday in, of the month. We always recognize birthdays, January birthdays. Um, if you would uh, stand, if your birthday is this month, please stand. We want to acknowledge you. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. Please remain standing. Amen. Did anybody get married in January? Did anybody? Get, amen. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody get married in January? Amen. 
Hey, man, they were, they were trying to start the year off right. That's why they got married in January. Hey, man, we want to sing happy birthday. Birthday. Hey, man, and anniversary. Hey, man. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. I will ask for anniversary years with the swans. How many years? He said, um, first. <laughs> your, your birthday today? Yeah, my birthday was in January. Okay. And you got married. Oh, 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 oh okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So you were standing for your birthday, not for your anniversary. You see how so easily we can perceive something? It even happens to the preacher. Amen. Somebody, the Greens, how long y'all been married? 42. 42. Woo. Amen. We praise God for 42. And somebody, was the anniversary? Was the anniversary of birthday? How many years? 35, 42. Come on, let's give God praise. God, we got some sustainable marriages. For those who are single, amen, you can see 35 and 42. Amen. Don't listen to what your friends done told you. Amen. Amen. Well, we believe God keeps marriages, uh, and um, we praise God uh, for that. Amen. Um, as we prepare for um, our um, tithe, um, we do re remember that the month of January, we celebrate this entire month as Prove the Tithe Month. We start off, I believe, how we start off has a bearing on how we end. We, we make resolutions all the time, things we're going to do and things we're not going to do. I pray that in your prayers, that tithing is in your, your resolution or your prayer. Um, Malachi 3, 8, 9, and 10, will a man rob God? He says, yet you have robbed me. You ask how, but yet you have robbed me in, in, your, in your giving, in your tithe, in your offering. He said, therefore, the whole nation of you are cursed, with a curse. He said, bring your tithe to the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me here, with, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings, so much so that you will not have room enough to receive it. I don't know about you. But I would sure love to have so many blessings. I don't have nowhere to put them all. <laughs> Amen. Not for selfish reasons. But the more I'm blessed, the more I'm able to bless some, somebody else. Let us start the, the, the year off being truthful and faithful to God. Let me challenge someone. If you have never tithed before, if you have never tithed before, it's simply, it is simply a tenth of your earnings. If God gave you $100, you owe him 10. Amen? If he only blessed you with a dollar this week, then you owe him a dime. It's, it's really easy math. Um, no one ever gives more than the other when it comes to a tithe. Whether, whether you give $100 or whether you earned $100 and you gave a tithe of your 10, $10, or if the Lord only blessed me with a dollar and I gave my, my dime, did you give more than me? No. You gave what was required. And what was required? The, the tenth. And sometimes we look at, well, if I have more, or if I make more, or if I can get more, then I'll tithe. I can tell you now, that's not how God works. First of all, God says to be faithful over the little. So in other words, if you're not faithful over the dollar, which requires 10 cents, he already knows. That you're not going to be faithful with a hundred with ten dollars. It's, it's simple math. Amen. He's not going to do it. He will not do that. But God says, if you're faithful over the little, faithful over the little, faithful over the little, I'll make you ruler over much more than that. How many of you believe that this morning? Amen. I, I believe that. I believe that's God's word. He said it and, it, and it's so. That settles it. We want to start the year off. And my prayer is that your prayer would be, Lord, bless me so that I can, I can tithe. Now, I know that sometimes starting off on the tithe, sometimes it's a growth process. It's beginning to trust God with, with a little, maybe two, maybe three or five or six percent. But eventually, we want to get to the point where you say, you know what? I trust God. 
that's and that settles it i trust him and, and, that, and that settles and god says if you do that i will rebuke the devourer for my name's sake for his name's sake he said i will i will rebuke the devourer i will i will keep the locusts from eating up your crops I will keep your fruit trees from um, uh, from developing too early and falling and falling to the ground. I will I will I will keep the worms from uh, devouring your apples, your fruits, and your grapes. Amen. In other words, he told Israel, "Your shoes won't wear out." Amen. 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 I'll keep you from getting sick and keep you from having medical bills. That's what God will do. Thank God for those who've already brought their tithe during the month for January. Some of you have come back during the week and brought your tithe. To God be the glory. Some of you have used Givelify to do that. If you would like to do that, you can do that today. Use Givelify. For those who want to pay their tithe or give their tithe, I don't like to use the word pay because we can't pay God. But for those who want to be obedient, to bring your tithe, you can do so this morning um, with opportunity, with envelopes in front of you. Please use those envelopes. Fill them out correctly. Leave them on your way out. Amen. On your way out. Please leave them in the baskets, um, in the offering boxes, at the exits on your way out as well. Eternal God, our Father, we come this morning out of obedience, giving back to you a portion of what you have already given us. Lord, we dedicate this month of January to you. As we bring our tithe to the storehouse, we trust Heavenly Father, you will be at your word. We ask, O oh God, for every opportunity we have to make it happen and give to you, we would always take advantage of it. What we give and have given, it will never be missed, but it will be multiplied once you put your hands on it and bless it. Lord, we pray for those who never have tithed before, who has a conviction right now that they want to start tithing. We ask in Jesus' name that you would make way for them to trust you, to lean not into their own understanding, but in all their ways. They'll, they'll, they'll trust you. Lord, we bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say amen. Amen and amen.
God. <laughs> Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our male chorus. Amen. It's good to hear men, it's good to hear brothers say that they want to do the Lord's will. Amen. I don't know how that registered in your spirit, but that registered quite well in mine. Amen. To hear men say, Amen. I think y'all missed it. To hear men. Well, let me just, let me back up. To hear black men say that they want to do his will. Amen. That is, that is part of my sermon today, a little bit, really. Um, so we're just so grateful once again to be in the Lord's house and to serve him on this second Sunday um, in January in the year of our Lord, 2024. Truly, God has been with us and has brought us, and our intention is to celebrate him and to, to do his will. Again, we are, we are just so, so grateful uh, uh, for that. Let us turn, if you will, let us stand in the presence of God. And as we do, if you will um, turn to Ephesians chapter 5. We, we were there last week. Ephesians chapter 5, we were there last week, amen, so um, if you're like me, um, you probably have to go back and uh, locate Ephesians 5, because if yours is still stuck on Ephesians 5, <laughs> you know what that means? That means you didn't open this since last Sunday. <laughs> if you have to search for it, I know that you've been using your Bible. Now you got to go back and find it. Amen. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. I'll give you. I know you've been using your Bible all week. So I'll give you another 30 seconds to find it. Amen. 
Ephesians 5, beginning at verse, um, last week we did verse 15 and 16. I want to read 15 um, and stop um, at verse 20. But we're going to take a text from verse 18. If you have it, say amen. 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 Um, be very, verse 15. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Let me read verse 17 again. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, look at somebody and tell them, be filled with the Spirit. Be with the Spirit. Amen. I'm really going to extract from verse 17, really. I had 18, but 17. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Amen. Last week, uh, the Lord blessed us last week, and we preached from the subject last week, redeeming the time. And today... I want to preach, continue from that subject, redeeming the time, and I put, if you want to add, part two, redeeming the time, uh, part two, or redeeming the time, dash, continued. I think that sounds more Spike Lee-ish. <laughs> redeeming the time. Continue. Church, last week we indulged in uh, the privilege that God has given us to redeem, redeem the time. We talked about how it is important to keep up with time. Um, time, uh, chronos, is chronological time. Hours, days, minutes, seconds. And it's important to keep up with time, Kairos time, which is God's time, in God's own movement, um, in his own desire to do a thing. Um, oftentimes we go through life, we go through life uh, calculating and fitting God or expecting God to operate in our chronological time. Um, somewhat, there's nothing wrong with that because it's, we can't control Kairos. Um, but chronological time are days, minutes, seconds, events that we want God to reveal himself. Mm -hmm. You've heard me say before, and you've heard the older generation say before, that's what they meant when they would say, he may not come when you want him. But when he does come, he does come right on time. What they were simply doing, saying was, I want him to come in my chronos. But he didn't show up in my chronos. He showed up in his kairos, and that was all right, too. It's just that we want God. We are human, and by nature, we want things when we want it. Um, we used to think babies would have tantrums, but I've seen grown folk have tantrums, too. Look at somebody telling we're getting off to a good start. <laughs> oh, I've seen grown folks have tantrums, boy. They don't get their way, man. They, they, they roll on the carpet, Jack. You have to tell them, get up from there. 
You know better than that. You're too old to be acting. Your mama would say, you're too old to be acting like that. But when God does show up, Kairos, Kairos, Kairos in his time, is settled, it's done. What you've asked him to do has been done. Again, it may not have been done your way. Because the word reminds us that our ways are not his ways and his ways are not our ways. Um, of course, when he does things, it is final. It, it is sealed. It is the period at the end. It's time to move on to the next thing that God would do. And so how we measure time, what are we called to do with the time that we have? What are we uh, to do with the time? Time goes by at a pace that we cannot recreate because when it is gone, you will never be able to go back and get it. You've heard people say it. I have said it myself that I wish I could turn back the hands of time. And when you ask him why, because, because I would do this or I would do that or I would do this differently. Oh, I wish I had another chance to get it right. Because there is something in us in life that helps us live a moment of regret. All of us, I know we're saved to the bone, I know we've been sanctified to the marrow, but if nothing else I do know in life is that every last one of us, from the choir loft, amen, to the door, from wall to wall, from the ceiling to the floor, one thing I do know, all of us, all of us, all of us have a sense of regret. Oh, come on, look at somebody tell me there's some regret in your life somewhere. You ain't got to tell me what it is, but all of us have something in our life we regret. In fact, if I just gave you five seconds to pull it up, amen, you won't have to, it won't take you but two seconds to pull it up. Because life deals with choices. And sometimes making choices are not always the right choice that please God. And so therefore, some of the choices we made, it did not work for us. Consequences came. Therefore, in that choice alone, I'm not even including the other choices, we now live a life sometimes in regret. And that's fine. And that's okay to have some regret somewhere in our life. Um, but the thing is, don't, don't uh, live your life in that regret. <laughs> You'll pull that down later. Don't, don't try to make up for that regret because uh, when you re when you, whatever it was that you did that you regret it, it was another time. And you cannot go back and recreate time all over again. Do I have a witness? Let me help somebody get over some hurt. How many of you have been hurt in life? Amen. How many of you have been hurt? Maybe just five? Okay, wow. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I need to lay on the couch let you counsel me. But all of us have been hurt in life and we've been hurt in life not by things. We've been hurt in life by people. People will hurt us in life. If we let our guard down, they will hurt us in life. And let me tell you, sometimes hurt you will never ever get over. That's why you got some people right now that will sell their soul to the devil for an opportunity to get back at you. <laughs> I wish I could call Jephthah down for a minute. Amen. Amen. Uh, but they'll sell their soul for an opportunity to get back at you. And, and if they are a level up on you and can do it, don't think that they will not. Do I have a half a witness in here? It's just a matter of opportunity. But thanks be to God, uh, God who sits high and look low and sees it all, amen, uh, who knows he has to protect his children and he knows he has to look out for them because uh, the days are evil. Evil is plotted. Evil is not something that is sudden and evil is not something that just happens. Evil is something that is plotted. How do I know? Because number one, 
and um, our minds, our hearts are not normally inclined to evil. We do want to do right by God, amen. But sometimes uh, moments or situations that has happened to us will create an opportunity for us sometimes to think evil. And one thing I will tell you about evil, if you think evil too long, it won't be long before you carry evil out. Amen, somebody. Right, let me give you an example. I will give you Peter, for instance. If we want to go there, we remember Peter. Amen. Uh, Peter, uh, or rather uh, Judas, Peter, uh, his betrayal of Jesus was not evil. His betrayal of Jesus was out of his weakness. He was in a predicament when he had an opportunity, amen, uh, to identify himself with God because he was shaken in his his boots and he was scared amen when it came to owning up to knowing Jesus he denied it and how many of us have done the same thing we have denied Jesus in our weakness amen we were in a predicament whether it was a, a predicament a lustful predicament whether it was a predicament uh, that was fleshly we wanted to be involved or whatever it was we denied Jesus at least for the moment amen uh, that was out of weakness the flesh is weak and the spirit is always willing amen but the flesh amen is weak and therefore out of weakness we have sometimes denied Jesus brothers you've been there we've been there we get with the boys amen and they start having certain conversations and wanting to do certain things and wanted to go certain places amen all of a sudden uh, uh, male chorus rehearsal don't even go across our mind so sisters don't laugh amen don't do, you've been around the girls amen in certain conversations and certain situations amen come up amen you forget all about you had a six o'clock meeting at church amen in fact you'd never said anything about God in that conversation because you were weak at the time amen and you indulged in the conversation unlike Judas Judas betrayed Jesus by plan. He sold out for 40 pieces of silver. And therefore, the plan was, uh, when we see him, let us know if that's him or not. And how we do that is we want you to go up and kiss him. It simply means in Eastern civilization, which was a, uh, for us, it would have been a handshake because that's how Eastern civilization greet. Amen. They kiss on both sides of the cheek. And he says, when you see him, the one, you, he says, the one I go up to and kiss, he is the one. Which means it was plotted he took the time to plot with them he took the time to conceive it he took the time to think it out he took the time to plan it and he took the time to execute it and when he executed it now it becomes evil and God wants us to know today church that we live in a day our moment and time in which we live in some days that are evil. I told you last week, amen, the, uh, people are just mean, amen, somebody. And evil is always on the move. People are evil. The things that they're doing today are evil. The things that they're saying today are evil. The stuff that they're carrying out is evil. I mean, it is the Deplorable. It is. It is bad. Uh, it, it, it is. It, it disturbs God. It reminds us of the days of Noah, when God said, "Every inclination of their heart is bent on evil, and therefore I am going to destroy." Which I thought was going to be my text today, but I'm going to destroy the world by flood because the days are evil. And Jesus told his disciples, "So as it will be in the day. Uh, the, so as it was in the." days of Noah so shall it be in the end the day when people will be eat drinking and marrying and partying and getting down and dropping it like it's hot and getting it on amen and turning up and everything else we can think of we live in the time when the days are evil but we got to be reminded that we live in the days and times for evil but we got to remember as people and children and sons and daughters of God, God has another plan for us. 
Come on, you ain't feeling me today. God has another plan for us. And the plan he has for us, we quote it all the time in Jeremiah 29 is one, his plan is not to harm us at all. We, we know the deal. God has a plan and the plan God has, God's plan is already implanted in the church. The church is the body of Christ. We are not of the world and we are in the world yes and we but we are not of the world we are in the world we see everything that's going on around us but we do not have to get involved with everything that's going on around us because God has sanctified set us apart smoothed us over here consecrated us breathed life into us and washed us in his blood and filled us with purpose vision and power Power, that we do not have to do and indulge and go down with the world the world hates Christ amen because it was the world that crucified Christ and Christ has already told us that um, it's not the master greater than his uh, greater than the sheep or than, or than the people because if they done that to me surely they'll do the same thing to you None of us, amen, none of us, none of us, amen, uh, are uh, to the point where the Satan will not bother and try us. We live in a world with it's time for the church to, to recognize that Christ is the redeemer of all of us, amen. We belong to him and because we belong to him, we have to know that God has a plan for our life. Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, the Ephesian church, in his letter, he started off with a rebuke, uh, hearing about some behaviors that he heard about, and he wanted to address them. But Paul never, never addressed any of these churches without admonishing them and letting them know really who they are. And that's part of life. I really sometimes question and wonder if we really know who we are. I know sometimes who we want to be, amen. We want to be everybody else, amen. But we have a problem being who God called us to be. Amen. And I said before that with any time you want to spend your time trying to be like somebody else, you will spend the rest of your time never discovering your own uniqueness. Look at somebody tell them, baby, I am unique. Amen. Matter of fact, look at him and tell him, you can't be like me. Amen. Amen. Now look now you look back at him and tell him I don't want to be like you. <laughs> you can't be like me I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm unique God has made me unique I am fearfully and wonderfully made after God made me I can guarantee you he took the mold and disposed of it amen he said I'm not, I'm not going to make another Jerome Lee Jr amen I'm not going to give nobody else his DNA I'm, I'm not going to give nobody else his X and Y chromosomes I'm not going to give nobody else his plan his will and his purpose now I'm going to give some others I'm going to give them but I won't give them his amen and at the same time he's not going to give me yours that's why Paul met when Paul said that you got to work out your own soul salvation with fear and with trembling look somebody tell them yes sir that's what you got to do you got to work out your own soul salvation you won't get to heaven on me and I definitely won't try to get there on you amen I can't get there on my mama and my mama sure can't get there on me you got to work out your own soul salvation with fear and with trembling that's how this thing work with God that's why so many won't come to God because what God is going to require of them is going to be by choice and sometimes we'd rather hold on to the other choice than to choose God. Well, let me fix that. Sometimes we'd rather hold on uh, half of the choice to the world and the other half of the choice we want to hold on to God. But let me tell you, God ain't going to bless no mess. He don't bless a mess. Amen. Now, he'll get you out of one, but you really want to be blessed? You got to come totally out of the mess. And so Paul tells the Ephesian church, 
Paul says, look, we've, we've got to get it together, y'all, now. We've got to get it together because we live in a world and culture that is mean, that is evil, and that is crazy. And Paul says, look, we've got to represent, and we represent Christ. Paul says, I can't have you walking around looking ignorant. I can't have you walking around not knowing who you are. I cannot have you walking around uh, with no vision at all in which you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know where you're going. Paul says, look, first of all, I, let me start you off with a warning. Whenever you read the Bible, whenever you see, be careful. It serves as warning. Never overlook, be careful. That's what got us in trouble. Our mama and dad told us, be careful. You say, okay, mama, we're right back out there. What you going to do? Because be careful are not just words that should fall on deaf ear. Be careful. Be careful. And then when they put the adjective in front of it, be very careful. He really means what he really means. He says, be careful. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, he says, do not be foolish. There we go with another warning. But understand what the Lord's will is. Another warning, do not get drunk. Now, it just so happened he said on wine. But I'm going to move the on wine out. And just say, don't get drunk, period. Because if I don't, that'd be somebody's excuse. Well, <laughs> then you're going to come and try to debate me with the Bible. Say, I know what the Bible say. I'm the resident theologian around here. I know what the Bible say. Your interpretation of what the Bible says is wrong. Do not get drunk. In his day on wine. In our day on everything on the shelf. Don't get drunk. Why? Because it leads to debauchery. But instead. Be filled with the spirit. That's Paul's way of helping us this morning. To know that we've got to redeem the time in which we live. Paul says if you're going to redeem the time in which we live, Jerome, you got to let folk know that if you're going to redeem the time in which we live, you have to understand, I told you last week, that you have to understand that this is instructional and they have to, they have to, that we have to display the wisdom of God in your life. And not only do you have to display the wisdom of God in your life, you got to remember that every, uh, you got to remember that knowing that nothing is more important than the will of God. And then not only that, he said, then if after you know that, then you got to know that you got to remember that everything worth doing requires care. Jesus cared for people. And Jesus never kicked anybody to the curb out of a lack of care. It didn't matter who it was. Tyrone, whether it was the kids, up to the oldest of the oldest, he cared for them. I mean, he cared for them when nobody else cared for them. Even the children, when the children would come up to Jesus and address him, when the kids would come up to him and greet him, and you know, children are innocent. Uh, they, they are innocent, amen. Children just about love anybody and everybody. That's what makes them vulnerable, amen, to perverted minds because they are vulnerable. They don't know any better. That's all they know is love love, attention, and care. And so therefore, when the uh, children would approach Jesus, the, the disciples around Jesus, would, they would shoo the kids away and tell them to get away and pull Jesus to them, to gravitate toward them. And Jesus stopped them and said, hey, brother, what you doing? Unless you humble yourself, amen, like these children, you, you uh, will not be fit or the kingdom of God will not come to you. What Jesus was trying to do was interrupt their selfishness as adults because we want Jesus around us all the time, amen, and we act like Jesus don't have anything or don't want anything to do with the kids. Sometimes what we do is, sometimes we stand in the way of children getting blessed by Jesus because we are so selfish, we want 
all the blessings. Amen. We think children ought to stay in a child's place. I, I, I can recall in my, in my former context, amen, prior to me coming here to serve, I remember out of assignment, I remember uh, there, were, there was some talk. Um, we, we were working, um, just what happened, we were working on bylaws. They didn't have any when I got there. And we were working on some bylaws and somebody actually wanted to put in the battle. That goes to show you sometimes we don't think at all. We are just as flesh and sometimes we ain't no more spiritual. I don't care how long we've been in church. Sometimes we just ain't, we, we just ain't spiritual. Still fleshly. Amen. And somebody literally wanted to put in the bylaws that the children had no say so. Amen. In the church. And so I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean don't have no say? Well, they're not old enough to vote. I said, well, what do you mean they're not? Well, you gotta be at least 18 to vote. Baby, where do you get that from? They getting baptized now at 14, 15, and 16, 12, and 11. How you gonna not tell a 12-year-old or 14-year-old who was a member, you did say he was a member now, when he got baptized and enjoying the body of Christ and enjoying the church and did a public uh, baptism in which I baptized him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Now you gonna deprive them of saying so? I know why, because number one, it's more y'all than it is of them. Uh-huh, I know, uh -huh. That's your way now of making sure your motion get passed, amen, and the kids ain't got nothing to say. Because see, we want to control. That's the that's that's what sin is. We want to control. And if we can control, amen, then we believe and our psyche and our psychosis begin to tell us that we are in control. But I hear the I'm here to bust something out of this bubble today, baby. I'm here to tell you you are not in control. God is, and God will always be in control. You might control your resident and your house. But this house. Look at somebody and tell them, you don't control. And so now Jesus shows that he cared for the kids. Let me give you one more. I'll give you last week. Here's a woman at the well. Jesus goes to get water. Jesus asks the woman for some water. She said, you talking to me? He said, yeah, I'm talking to you. You a Jew asking me a Samaritan woman for some water? Uh, yeah, I'm asking you for some water. Well, I don't know if that's going to happen because uh, 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 we, don't, we don't get along. I've been raised in my Samaritan, by my Samaritan mom and daddy not to get along with y'all. We don't, we, don't, we don't mess with y'all. You know how we do, y'all. Yeah, y'all on that side of the track. We on this side of the track, both of y'all, both and both struggling. Oh. Y'all drive big cars. We drive little cars. Y'all, those people, we them people. <laughs> Which is how we come up with division. And so now he tells her, look, well. Look, I, 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 I know you probably, I know I'm a Jew, I know you're a Samaritan, but let me tell you something. Why don't you go ask uh, uh, the husband at your house uh, to, to get some water because uh, you, you coming out here this time of day, amen, you want to be out here in the first place. And so uh, 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 she says, he, well, I, I don't have a husband. Jesus said, yeah, I know you don't have a husband. And then, uh -huh. I know you don't have a husband. I, 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 know, I know that man at your house is laying up waiting on you to bring him something to drink. And the last five you had, I mean, they, they, they're not yours. But I care enough for you. Not to judge you. But just to give you a little piece of truth. And she leaves, and she leaves out joyfully and skipping. I said she couldn't have been a sister. Because y'all know a sister would have cussed Jesus out. You know it. Sister, you know you would have dug your heels in the ground, put your hands on your hip, took your head, and boy, ain't no telling what you would have said to Jesus about your business. Especially, the thing about it, especially when it's true. I can see if he was lying on you. Yeah, if he was lying on you, yeah, tell him off. But he told you the truth. 
You know, truth will bring it out of people, boy. People, let me tell you something. Y'all, this I'm giving you some wisdom. People will become more hostile toward you over the truth than they will a lie. That's when you know you told the truth. When they want to back you in the corner and fight you, oh, you know you done told the truth. But he cares, and we've got to know how to care. That's what Jesus wants us to do. It's we who wants us to know how to care for people because care and love are synonymous conversations. When you show some brother or some sister whose life may not be like yours, when you show that brother or sister whose life might be messed up, when you show that brother or sister, amen, that their behavior is unacceptable, when you show that brother and sister some love and some care let me tell you they will come to you as humble as they can which will present for you the opportunity to tell them about the love of Jesus Christ that is within you everything we're doing requires care redeeming the time we redeem the time also we have to know that redeeming the time reminds us that redeeming the time gives us an opportunity to discover and do God's will let me help us uh, 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 Paul talked about redeeming the time he talked about the will of God in that verse he talked about doing the will of God. Well, that's the question that we got to be clear on. That's the, that's the one thing we've got to know or else we might be just going and just die and go home and be with Jesus today. You've got to know, you've got to know the will of God. You cannot, you cannot declare, you cannot wear a cross around your neck and not know what the will of God is. There's no way. That's a, that's, that's an oxymoron. Amen. Because somebody might come up to you and question you about that cross. And uh, and don't think you could say, well, it's gold and it's silver. <laughs> you know, you ain't deep at all. That's the only thing you can say about the cross around your neck. Because Jesus didn't die on a gold or a silver cross. Do I have a half a witness in here? I know that looks fine and everything. That crucifix is fine. I'm not, I'm not guess what you wear around your neck. That's your business. But what I am saying, that's not how Christ died. And he died on a old rugged cross. It was wood and splints. Do I have a witness in here? He died on that. And so he said, well, look here. First, you've got to know that if you're going to redeem the time, you've got to give folk an opportunity. And you have to discover and know and discover and do the will of God. And and so what is the will of God? Because the Lord's, the will of the Lord is redemption. In other words, God wants your soul back. Because your soul is in jeopardy if you do not accept him as Lord in your life. Your soul is in jeopardy. Do I have a witness here? And the word says in Ezekiel 18, all souls are mine. Yeah, they belong to him. That, that, that's no problem right there. He, he is the author and finisher. He is the creator of our soul. He, he breathed breath into us. We became living souls. We got that down. Pat. But God says, I want you to know that the will of the Lord is for me to redeem your soul back. Back from what? Back from the curse of a broken law. It's through one man sin into, into the world and death has passed down to all men. In other words if you trace your lineage on your maternal, to, your, mater, on your maternal side of your family and your paternal side of the family you'll find a man, we don't like to hear this but you'll find that your mom and daddy were sinners. Yeah. Well pastor I don't, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't talk about my mama. Notice they ain't saying nothing about their daddy. <laughs> we don't care about that. But don't talk about my mama. Well, here I am, here I am, here I am. It's just so she don't be left out. Her mama was too. And so was her mama. And so was her mama. All the way up into your first mother. Eve, all the way up to your first father, Adam or Adam, depends on how they teach you in seminary, which means first of, he, he was the first man. 
And so, and so therefore, uh, sin has trickled down to every generation to us and we will give birth as well to those who will fall in that same category. David said in sin that my mother conceived me. Amen. That's just the stamp that's going to be on their back. Which means that in life, somewhere in life, God wants to redeem their soul back from that curse of fallen man. Amen. And buy them back and have that soul at his, at, uh, at his possession so that at the end of life, that soul will spend eternity with him. Listen, let me tell you, I don't care how much you go through life and how much you enjoy life. This is not a moratorium on enjoying life. I'm here to enjoy life and I am going to enjoy life life but at the same time you do not want to jeopardize your soul that's why we cannot do what everybody else do your soul money cannot buy your soul a man you'll never get back twice there is no such thing as purgatory that when you die you are stuck between heaven and hell because God's going to give you another chance to get it right and make up your mind baby this life is a one shot deal do you have a witness it's appointed once for a man to die and the word says what and then the judgment we got to know that God wants to redeem us and by redeeming us we've got to know what the will of God is now can I talk about general and specific because the general will of God well, let me say this first of all the will of God is not you asking God, what is your will for my life? Let me help you. Henry Blackaby paints it very well in experiencing God. You do not ask God what is his will for your life. You ask God, first of all, what is his will? Follow me now. Follow me. When you ask God what is his will, or when you know what God's will is, then God will show you when you spend time with him what is his will for your life. Come on, you, you, that was your shouting cue. You missed it right there. You, you, you missed it. Let me, let me come back and get you. I'm, I'm going I'm 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 to bring the long bus this time. A, a, amen. Uh, 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 general uh, is that the general will of God is that all would be saved. That's general. All, every, the drunkard, the crack addict, the drug addict, the gambler, the prostitute, the ones who think, who've never done any of them sins and think they can make it in just on that alone. No, all has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It is the general will of God that we be saved. Amen. That's the general. But the, that's the general. But the specific comes when it comes to you 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 got to know specifically what God's will is for you and I'm here to tell you you'll never know it until you first discover his will you've got to get in Christ and get saved first well pastor you preach into the choir we already saved and good that's half the battle right there now you need to deepen yourself in God amen and deepen yourself in him and begin to make requests and discover what your gift is in God not your talent but your spiritual gift and when you tap and find out what your spiritual gift is in God now it's up to you to develop that gift spend time with that gift and learn about that gift and then give that gift back to God so God can anoint you afresh so you can now do the will of God in your life I know I just lost half of you because I see the spaceship over your head. I know I just lost you, but if you hear what I'm telling you, you got to first get in God's will. You got to get saved, in other words, first. I don't mean just join a church. Anybody can join a church. You know how many names on the list of people who just join the church? Amen. Uh, they are join a church, uh, but there are two roles you got to get on, baby, if you will make it with God, and that is you got to get on the church role, but you got to get on the church's role. 
Yes, now you've got to redeem the time. Now you are equipped because now God can use you readily as he would like to. That's the general, that's the specific. But you've got to, again, get in Christ. Christians are to understand, we are to comprehend intellectually that the Lord's will is and then this is what it is and then you can carry it out God's people ought to be some intelligent people yes, yes. do I have a half a witness in here yes. now I'm not saying you've got to know everything because be aware of people who know everything yes. hello in here look at somebody tell them you don't know it all, don't know it all. amen you know some people think they know it all amen I, I mean, they think they know everything. They think they know everything, everybody. You let them tell it, they done traveled around the world twice and spoke to everybody four times. <laughs> they know everything. They know it all. And let me tell you, they are the worst person I probably, I'm going to give you something another pastor probably wouldn't tell you, but I'm being transparent. P persons who know, it all, who know it all are the worst persons to lead. <laughs> let me tell you why. They are what you call uncoachable. Anybody ever play sports? Anybody ever play sports in here? Three people. I am praying for y'all. Let me tell y'all something. Three people. All these folk here on three people play sports. Jesus. What do you think I'm going to call you out or something? I'm not a statistician. I don't want to know what your record was. I know you're going to lie about it. Yeah, let me tell you, I, I made MVP three years in a row. So tell the truth and shame the devil. You sat on the bench three years in a row. But if you play sports, raise your hands. Back up, put them down. If you play team sports, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Team sports. You know, there's always somebody, I played a little bit of basketball. I was not, uh, I'm not, not as good uh, as Brother Green here. Amen. But uh, I did have some game and I did play on some teams, especially recreation league. You know, you always got somebody on the team that just know it all. You know what I mean? The coach trying to get you to run drills. You always got somebody, oh, yeah, they already know how to do it. Yeah. Trying to get you to do figure eights. Somebody already know how to do it. Trying to get you to shoot on the left side and not the right all the time. Oh, somebody already know how to do it. Uh, one, do a one, uh, one, 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 two, one, and all that stuff. Somebody already know how to do it. I'm like, if you already know how to do it, you, you need to get your own team. Because you know it all. And let me tell you something. You can't help people who know it all. I can tell you, I, I'm, I'm going to save you some effort. Don't try. You will exhaust yourself trying to help people who know it all? They already know. Therefore, you can't tell them nothing. They're the ones that got to find out the hard way. But we don't have that here at St. James. This is just other people's problems. Amen. Uh, so, Paul says, well, look, I, I want you to understand that I want you to be able to comprehend what God's will in your life. And intellectually, I want you to perform it and be able to carry it out. You got to intellectually know we are intellectual people. We are smart people. And we got to present ourselves to a world intellectually. And as I move on, here it is. What Paul was saying, you can't do that to yourself and you can't do that and you can't represent Christ intellectually. You cannot comprehend if you're walking around drunk. Paul says, do not get drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. To walk around drunk, Paul realized that you can't walk around here drunk. You cannot walk around, amen. Uh, we could fix it up because, you know, folks don't like to be caught. We, like, we live in a world where everybody got to be politically correct. You can't call a drunk that, you'll get sued. You'll get sued. You get sued. You got to be politically correct now, um, so you can't walk around uh, inebriated. Did, did I fix it right? I mean, you know, I, don't want, I don't want nobody to call the church. I don't want y'all 
have a litigation, and you'll see Pastor Lee on have litigation, some viewer, somebody said that Pastor called them a drunk. <laughs> I didn't call you a drunk. In fact, I don't know you. <laughs> you giving yourself away. <laughs> I give myself away. I know how we live. Folks are sensitive, man. I mean, they are sensitive. But they can cuss folk out, though, with no problem. Paul said, I can't have you walk around inebriated because Paul said, if you walk around drunk, walking around drunk will impair your sensual perception of life. Simply meaning you got five senses you got to operate in. And God needs them all. Matter of fact, if the ear says I'm not a part of the body, can, can I, am I not a part of the body? Paul says no. Uh, in Corinthians, Paul says no. We need, we need it all. The whole faculty has to be operating properly if you're going to be intellectually used by God. You can't have, uh, your, 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 your vision cannot be impaired. Your hearing cannot be impaired. Your feeling, your taste, amen, your sense of smell cannot be impaired. And that's what happened when we live in a world that's walking around intoxicated and inebriated. Now, they may not be necessarily drunk off wine, but some people are drunk off success. Oh, help me, Jesus. That's why when you, that's why when you, when we have sing the black national anthem, we get to the party, lest we be drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Then we start saying, um, because y'all don't know it. But when you get drunk with the wine of the world, all of your senses are impaired. You don't see, you don't see what God see. You won't feel what God feel. You won't hear what the Spirit is trying to say to you in these last and evil days. When you are drunk with success, when you are drunk with pride, when you are drunk, amen, uh, with wealth, uh, when you are drunk on yourself, on your looks, as if you are all of that and a bag of outdated chips, and when you are drunk, amen, on your complexion and the texture of your hair when you are drunk on what you drive and where you live when you are drunk on the top shelf and the chief stuff at the bottom shelf when you are drunk you will never be able to see people like God sees people it impairs your sensual perception of life. And God says, I can't have you walking around because it leads to debauchery. It leads to you thinking some bad stuff and living a bad and messed up and perverted and crazy wild life. That's why you ever notice, uh, I love this quote, I've been reading this book lately and I'm, I'm really into it. Uh, 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 and so uh, when we think about it, uh, one of the things the author says uh, in the book, Disruptive Thinking, which is T.D. Jakes, he says, we are born looking like our our mothers and our fathers but when we die we die looking like our choices now if that ain't true you better high five somebody right there and that's the fact you might look born you look like your mama you look like your daddy or your grandparents but guess what baby your decisions in life by the time they stretch you cross here your decisions in life baby you look like every decision you made in life what in the world you look like you done been through 50 miles of some bad road baby your life you seeing people your own age when you see them you say hey good to see you how you doing but when you walk away you'd be like man what in the world you've been doing to yourself baby when you burn the candle at both ends it shows at the end amen when you spend your life in the bottle guess what it will eventually show when you do number smoke crack all your life and drugs guess what it will show on your face because you look like your choices but Jesus said but still I still love you as you are do you have a witness come to me all ye that are heavy laden and I will give you rest that's what I love about Jesus I came to Jesus just as I was weary wounded and sad but I found in him a resting place come on somebody and he has made me glad has the Lord made you glad today 
Has God brought you out of some stuff? Aren't you glad you don't live like you used to? Are you going to make the best of your time? Look at somebody and tell them, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually to be in my mouth. I will lift up the Lord wherever I go. I'll let the world know that my Redeemer liveth and that he lives inside of me. Come on, won't he do it, church? Come on, let's redeem the time and tell them thank you. Redeem the time and tell them thank you. Come on, redeem the time and tell them thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us stand. My brother, my sister, this is the hour that God is calling you to get in his will. This is the time in your life. You know, there's a time in our life when we have to draw the line and say it's time out for foolishness. And it really is time out for foolishness. We live in an evil world. People gunning down each other. I mean, I, I just thought that I tell my wife to be careful. Uh, I told her, be careful, honey. Please be careful. Going, I'm telling you, be careful going to these gas pumps because, you know, they got this thing now where if you pull up to the gas pump and you already you see a card already in there, they're telling you not to touch it. The, 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 the normal response would be to, oh, I'm going to use this, you know, and you take it out and put it on top of the thing or whatever, and you put yours in there. Because the cards now pretty much have been laced with fentanyl. And when you touch it and it gets in your pores, it don't take long, within seconds, it will knock you out, if not kill you, and pass you out. And the person is watching, and they'll take the car and take you, or take you and the car. Who had time? Who in the world had time to sit around and think about stuff, how to do stuff like that? We got to redeem the time. We got to redeem the time. We got to get folk to Jesus. And we got to get them to we got to get them to him fast. My brother, my sister, why don't you come today? I believe the Lord is pulling on your spirit. The Lord wants to save you from yourself. And he wants to save you from destruction. This is your wonderful opportunity to start the year off in Jesus Christ. Our candidate for baptism, we want you to come and be a part of the kingdom of God and be a part of St. James if that is your desire. My brother, my sister, why, why don't you come? Don't put off tomorrow what need to be done today. Redeem the time. Tomorrow ain't promised. I know you say, well, I'll do it next week. Then next week is not promised. Next week, you might not be in your right mind. You don't know what's going to happen next week. Do it today. Come to Jesus. Why don't you do it today? Make him your savior. My sister, why don't you come? Christian experience. You know, listen, you've, you're already a Christian. You have accepted Christ. You need a church. You need a place where you can come and fellowship like today. Hear a word that's going to inspire you and feel the presence of God. Why don't you come? Make St. James your home today. Will you do that? Will you do that? Rededication. Pastor, you know, I've been out of church for a while. I missed some months. I missed some years. I, I, I need to come back to God. I declare I need to come back to him. But this is your opportunity to do it today. Nobody in this church is going to look at you in judgment. Nobody in this church has any room for judgment. We want you to come back because we care. We care. Why don't you come? Hey man, the word of God has went forth and the call to discipleship has been made. We want to pray this morning before we close out. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we bless you and thank you, O oh God, for this time that you've given. We want to make the best of the time that you've given. We want to redeem this time. And Lord, we want to do it soberly. We want to do it and be filled with your spirit. Heavenly Father, you have given us everything we need. We ask, oh God, that you would bless us to get in your will, to discover what your will is specifically for us to do. Heavenly Father, I pray, oh God, as I pray over our, this congregation that belongs to you. Lord, I first thank you for the privilege to be the under shepherd of St. James Baptist Church. Lord, you could have chose somebody else to do it. 
But Lord, I'm grateful that you've given me the assignment. And I do it with joy. I pray, oh God, for your people. They love you, oh God. They give like they love you. They worship like they love you. They sing like they love you. They serve like they love you. And in turn, Heavenly Father, we know you love us too. We know we're not a perfect people, oh God. Every church that you have told in those first seven churches in Revelation, you all admonished them. John the Revelator admonished them, but at the end of every admonishment, you said, but I have this one thing against you. You may have that one or two things against us, but Lord, we're trying to get it right. Lord, we study to show ourselves approved because we want to get it right. We do our power because we want to pray, stay connected so we can get it right. We serve on Sundays. We come and worship you. We study on Tuesdays and Wednesdays because we want to get it right. Give us understanding. Help us to be intellectuals. That we will understand and know what the will of God is. We lift up those who are sick. We lift up those who need to be healed. Not tomorrow, but need to be healed today. Move, not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit. We, ask, we pray for the Sweeney family, the loss of Mr. Sweeney, the loss of his brother. And those whom we know, we pray for those who may be in the hospital on beds of affliction. I see you, ventilators, God, move in a mighty way. We can't tell you what to do or how to do it. But Lord, we ask you to do, do something. Do, do what we can't do. And Lord, whatever you do, be it whether we like it or whether we don't, you are God. Give us what we need to just deal with the choices that you decided to make. Lord, we pray for my brothers behind me, oh God, who love Jesus, who are faithful to you, raising their families, and have raised families and grandkids, put children through college, and work so hard that their knuckles and their backs prove how much they've worked. God, strengthen them that they'll still be able to stand with melodious voices and tenor and baritone and bass and still sing, I shall not be moved. Bless them, oh God. Provide for them to take care of their families. Continue, God, to let their families recognize that the Lord has been good to us. Lord, we bless you and we thank you, oh Lord. Bless us, oh God, as we go back to Bible study Tuesday, Wednesday, God, be with us. Bless us, oh God. Give me understanding that I might be able to help somebody else with understanding. Lord, we bless you, we thank you, and we count it joy. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God say amen. Amen, amen. amen. and amen. Let's give God praise. What a time, what a time, what a time. Did not you enjoy that word on today? I thank you for watching us today and thank you for in-person worship today. Please don't forget to join us 7 o'clock Tuesday, 12 o'clock Wednesday for our Bible study. And I pray you've had a wonderful week. Join us again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.